Hi, welcome to chapter 6 of tut tutorial 7. In this chapter we'll look at permits. We've completed the case decisions and case tracking and uh, permits are very similar so you click, you can create a new permit by uh, clicking on the permits link and permits have s the multi-step um, feature in that they allow you to pull from a template of, se of a series of permits that we've already created on the system for you. Um, these are quite useful so they have pre-formatted conditions um, and then all you have to do is edit the the things which are different on, on the particular permit that you're generating. Um, the permit reference is again a friendly name because it's a unique permit ID is generated by the system so you don't need to try and come up with a, f a special number um, so this would typically be you know the um, something like the Moiler building Okay, so something that's understandable to the to the applicants uh, might be alterations to the balcony in January 2012 or something like that, or whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, the Heritage Authority again, let's do SARA this time. Permit holder is the person who will hold the permit. Um, for archaeological permits, this is a far more stringent process. Uh, qualifications are checked. Um, for buildings older than 60 years, it's generally the owner. For the permit 2, this is only for heritage objects, so this is where an object is being exported, for instance, from uh, uh, from South Africa to another country, and it might be scientific material, and the person receiving that material is specified in permit 2. Um, the section of the Act, let's say uh, 34 for uh, alterations to buildings, all the older than 60 years. Again, if you were dealing with the KZN Act and at a MAFA, then you would use this field, but we're not going to do that for this one. The site reference is very important. If we're dealing with permits for sites, we fill in the site reference. If it was an object or collection of objects, we would specify the object ID. So then it would generate two different types of permits, very similar to each other, but the one is for objects and one is for sites. Most of the times you'll be dealing with sites and uh, I'm going to permit on um, one I use very often for examples um, maybe GR uh, well I don't have access to it because I'm not a member of the organic group so it's not coming up in my list so this is quite important that the permissions for the um, a heritage officer are set correctly so I'm going to pick just a, a site which is open to the, the heritage officer uh, let's take uh, let's take that site there. Okay, that's not a problem. And this would have been created for you in the case if it had, uh, if it never been created before on Cyrus. Um, so generally, you don't create the site anymore at this level. Um, but uh, it could be a declared site, so it should be in the database anyway. Let's move on to the bottom. The uh, activities. Um, Let's say it's additions and alterations. So all the, the common fields, types, this is where, how we are able to drill down later on to, to the types of permits issued over a period, an area, and so on. The permit date um, is generally the date from two. Um, so it's normally set to three years, but it, it can be changed to one year. So let's change that to one year and the permit fee reference, this is the payment reference number for the permit if if you're charging for permits it's not applicable in all the pr provinces um, so this is an optional field but let's pretend we did have a payment reference and the payment date perhaps it was Monday and um, the proof of payment so you would upload the PDF of the proof of payment, I'm just going to upload this as an example, and um, then the permit template, this is the most interesting field to you, is to drop down and pick one of the templates available. Um, let's say one of the built environment templates, and all we have to do in order for the template to appear in this box is to hit next. This triggers a rule which 
um, is invoked when you are saving the um, the, the the permit. So it's in draft mode at the moment. So we've sa we've clicked next and it's saved the the permit and um, now we have the template available to us. And now we can change the data that's come up. So the date it was stamped perhaps was the 22nd, let's say 22nd of November. Um, and the drawings, so I'll just leave that for now, but you can specify various conditions. Um, and edit the template as you like. So this is just a starter for you to move on and automate your work and there are various templates depending on what kind of permit you are generating. Once you're done with your permit, just like the case decisions and letters, you would upload the PDF version of that permit to the um, field here below. So let's save by clicking on done or you can hit save and we are going to um, then generate the PDF of this. So you can see the uh, screen has got a slight pink color again because it's not published. So let's publish this and then you'll see the generate PDF um, link appear. Let's generate that PDF and save it to the desktop. Close that and I'm going to edit the permit just to finalize this. So let's go down to the bottom and choose that PDF and I'm uploading it and then once I've done that I'm I am done so let's click on save and that's the the end of the matter now a very important thing is you might have changed your mind about the permit template and you would like to overwrite the template with another template to do that it's quite simple you can edit the permit go down to the template ensure that you delete everything in that field right it won't do anything unless this is completely blank then change the template that you would like and click next if it's not blank in this area then the template won't kick in and nothing will happen but if it's blank the rule that follows is it will pick the template and fill the full information in that block now of course we've now uploaded a PDF of um, information that's not matching this template so I'm going to save this but I'm going to first remove this permit save this um, draft and then we will generate the PDF let's, oops, uh, let's print that, save that okay, and upload the, the other version remove the wrong thing there. Let's upload this and it's great and I'll upload the workshop program again as a, as a so-called proof of payment. Alright that's pretty simple let's hit save next and that's the end of the, the permits. Okay, so we have our permit, there's all our conditions, and we have the PDF. The proof of payment we, we've hidden from the, the view, so it's available to you as the case officer, but um, in the view for public view, we just make the permit itself available. Um, that's the end of permits. Let's close the chapter there.